Welcome back to the Dark Reading News Desk here at RSA 2023. Terry Sweeney here with Dark Reading. Joining me now is Dave Merkel, co-founder and CEO of Expel Security. Dave, thanks for joining us on News Desk today. Sure, happy to do it. We are talking about a, uh, a key theme here at RSA, integration. Um, but uh, before we get there, uh, let's, let's maybe just do an assessment of the current threat landscape. I'm curious, um, what are some of the threats or current permutations that you're seeing in the threat landscape? Yeah, so uh, something that, that um, I mean, none of this will sound surprising, right? If you're a practitioner, you're like, duh. But I mean, we'll go ahead and point it out. Uh, one is, um, you know, there's no decrease in terms of, uh, you know, actors out there and their operational proficiency continues to increase. And so in uh, your ability to operationalize what you have and act quickly becomes more and more urgent mm. if you're going to effectively uh, reduce or mitigate risk. Uh, new attack surfaces are always in vogue, so as we get better at protecting the things that we've traditionally had for a while, the new stuff becomes a really ripe and interesting target. So whether you're talking cloud or container security or what have you, uh, those become increasingly interesting targets. Again, I don't know that that's surprising, it's just that we see it in practice across our customer base and we can point to it on a, on a daily basis. And we can look at, you know, over the lifetime of Expel, it's shift over time. We've been about five years now in market. Uh, and so we can actually watch this stuff uh, as it uh, kind of twists and morphs and, and turns with the times as we get better in some areas and then have other flanks exposed. Um, the, the dynamics that you're describing here have led um, a lot of customer organizations to look more closely at integrating functions and mm -hmm. uh, processes uh, across their security operations center. Um, integration remains a bit of a holy grail in technology, and mm -hmm. for many it, it, it uh, maybe evokes uh, images of of expensive and uh, complicated, um, mm -hmm. which isn't entirely fair, but there is, a, there is a history sort of in the broader IT industry of that. Integration nonetheless remains critical in security. Um, mm -hmm. Say a bit more about what's driving that. Yeah, uh, the, the thing that we see is, you know, if you've got, you, typically if you're, you're an organization that cares about protecting what you have, uh, because you understand what the exposure is or your, your business leaves you um, you're kind of materially vulnerable, uh, you're going to want to have multiple ways to protect and, and detect and respond in your environment. But when you're looking at all of those different signal sources in a silo, you lose a lot of opportunity to find things you would miss to kind of boost the signal. And so the ability to have kind of a more combined view to combine those data streams to do interesting analytics, et cetera, uh, I think is, is significant. You are co completely correct that it is expensive and difficult. And so that's why as we thought about you know, our approach, we put a real uh, premium on being able to drive that integration across our customers' detection and response investments, whether you're talking EDR, network, SIM, cloud platforms, cloud SaaS, Kubernetes, whatever it might be, so that you can actually get the benefit of those combinations. And so because that is the core of our business model, we, are a, we have been able to afford to be good at that, whereas a cost center in an enterprise may not be able to make that level of integration investment. Okay. Dave, all that being said, um, Applications are notoriously tricky to integrate without compromising security. Um, how can organizations integrate apps and security outside of the traditional approaches that have been used? Well, the, there's the traditional approach of they don't. Um, but uh, you know, something that, that, that we've worked on with our customers, uh, particularly for SaaS applications, like if you're talking applications, the number one set of resources that kind of fit that definition are all the, all the utilization of like enterprise SaaS that's out there in the market. Uh, and the, uh, the thing that we've done is really lean into the telemetry those applications can provide, okay. pull that into the integration with everything else, uh, and utilize the pieces of that signal and boost it with everything else that we're integrated with. So don't just look at it as an island, look at it across. So not just the application itself, but where is it being accessed from? Do you have endpoint visibility? What's that endpoint saying? Is it being accessed from an endpoint where you don't have that visibility? Did you expect that? There's a bunch of these kinds of sure. things. Um, now let's get kind of a little uh, step further. The primary currency you're probably transacting on with an app is the user, the identity of the person accessing it. Who is that person? What role do they have? Are they on vacation this week? Mm. Like these kinds of things. Like if you can actually reach those pieces of information, you can start to build a more complete picture off of some pretty thin threads that can give you enough to actually transact in a meaningful way 
which is exactly the kind of strategy that, that, that we've looked to employ. Okay. Um, in parallel to all this, uh, a function of vulnerability management has started to emerge called the vulnerability prioritization. Talk about what that is and how it addresses the problems that customers are facing. Sure. So, so a long-standing sort of challenge with vulnerability management is you know, it, much like alert management, is you get this pile of stuff out of your investments, right? Whatever product suite you might be using, you mm. know, maybe some Tenable, Rapid7, Qualys, whatever. Uh, and, and you don't have the resources or budget to transact on all of it in a manner that you feel that you should, but you've got to make some decisions. You, you should do something. What do you do? And so there's this idea around vulnerability prioritization, which is something we've latched on to. I, I, I try to think of it as sort of how do you operationalize that data? How do you take the realistic set of it that you can action based on how much it really matters, like not its theoretical priority by some you know, score, right. but by understanding your own environment, understanding how that, th that list of, of potential vulnerabilities maps and what are you actively seeing happening at any given point in time to give you a transactable number of things that you should go care about and actually care about in finite time. Right? Because you know, see sort of the beginning of the conversation where I was talking about threats becoming more efficient, more operationally capable, you have to do the same thing. You can't let your vulnerability information sit around for, well, you know, days or weeks or months before we maybe get around to it. Like, you got some high priority stuff that could be transacted on right now very easily by an attacker. You need to transact on that yourself in mitigating the risk in short periods of time. And so that vulnerability prioritization discipline is really trying to make it realistically operational so you can actually get some benefit out of your vulnerability management investments. Okay. So circling back to the integration theme, um, how does Expel's vulnerability prioritization product integrate into customers' existing environments? So there's a few things that, that we're able to do. One is that prioritization I talked about in terms of understanding your operational environment. So, so if you have Expel working for you and we've integrated into all your other security investments, we can see your operational environment. And so we have sort of the realistic picture that we okay. can use to combine with that data to say, mm, it's these out of these 40, it's these six and right now. The other thing that we can do with it is because we can see your operational environment, because you know, there is an understanding of perhaps new vulnerabilities, particularly like widely spread publicized ones, we may be able to give you a bit of a picture before your vulnerability management platforms can for sort of red hot right now issues. Uh, and then lastly, we're able to take all that vulnerability information and then integrate that with the things that we're doing for you in detection and response. So say we detect an interesting event or potential incident on your endpoint, we see it impacts a couple of systems, we see that it's, it's operating in a way where it does map to certain vulnerabilities, we maybe see there's some additional vulnerabilities on assets around it that increase the ability for an attacker to move laterally. We can now take that incident and go, ooh, not just oh no, but holy cow oh no, mm -hmm. and it's not just the targets that are compromised, it's the additional ones at risk around it that have these high priority vulnerabilities, whatever they may be, or whatever the list is, transact on these assets and do it right now because that should also be part of your detection and response posture. So what benefits should customers expect to see from using vulnerability prioritization? Well, first, getting some real bang for the buck out of that data in a way that impacts your risk. Uh, and, and you're able to actually see the operational benefit. Like we're not talking theoretical patch and oh, right. it was beneficial because we didn't get hit. You can actually, in a day-to-day -day basis, understand its operational benefit. Uh, and I think that's really, that's really the big thing. Like it's, it's getting that day-to-day -day realistic risk reduction value out of something that has been really challenging at times to get that out of. You know, so if we go back you know, years, it's just been a long-standing problem for, for customers. And, and I mentioned, it's very similar to alerts. I'm drowning in alerts. I'm drowning in a list of vulnerabilities. These problems have a lot of similarities between them, so we're taking that expertise we have on how do you not drown in alerts and applying it to this domain. All right, well, um, really great slice at the integration issue and uh, using vulnerability management data to uh, come up with prioritization to make networks and computing much safer. Thanks so much for joining us on the news desk today. Yeah, thanks for having me. We've been talking with Dave Merkel of Expel. This has been Terry Sweeney for the Dark Reading News Desk. Thanks for joining us for this segment. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.